Good afternoon. Hello. We're going to talk about uh, fear in dogs today. And I was realizing, Sue, Sue Kernick picked this for me. Because um, <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. So she says, how about talking about this? So I said, OK, fine, I'll do that. And, uh, and I begin to realize that essentially on these, on these afternoon talks, I've seemed to be talking about one emotion, and then another emotion, and then another emotion. So we'll just call this the emotion series. <laughs> yeah. So this is fear. And fear is, is a pretty big emotion with dogs, pretty big emotion. Um, so I have had in two consults in two days where fear has been the predominant emotion in the dogs. The first one was yesterday, um, and it was with a pit bull. Uh, she walked in the door. She just wa they walked her in here, and she started to bark. We walked her into Dawn's office, and she kept on barking. She barked whenever anybody walked down the hall. She barked whenever anybody got up. She barked, you know, she just barked. And, um, and she was very, actually she was very unstable, but she was barking to try to get people to go away, which is a, one of the things that dogs do with fear. The dog today um, doesn't bark, is very quiet and uh, very aloof. And he, what she did, and they both had the same name, oddly enough, one was a pit bull, this one was a Great Dane mix. Um, and what she would do is, if a guy came in, you know, she'd, she'd start to growl if it was a man. So we tried on Larry. John, you were one of our, our guinea pigs. Did, did, did better with you than she did on Larry. So, but bo both of those cases were, were dogs that had fear-based behaviors. And so this is probably, I don't know, maybe two-thirds of the uh, uh, consults that I do have to do at some point or another with fear. This is a very, very fearful dog. Um, and now we're going to go on. OK. So going back to you know, the, the, the root of emotions, um, dogs have all the emotions that human beings do, um, pretty much, we think. We're not absolutely sure, because they, pro they keep some of them to ourselves, themselves, other than, unlike us. Um, and, uh, but in all the, uh, all the animals, that's what we see is, you know, the, the emotions that we have are mirrored to some extent in most animals. The, there are three brains. Um, I'm not going to go into this a whole lot, but it, it's really quite fascinating. We have our brains, nature being, a, you know, very smart. We have a reptilian brain, and on top of that, there's a mammalian brain, and on top of that is the human brain. So the cerebral cortex is something that we have that other animals don't have. And that's the part of our brain that says, hmm, um, my reasoning ability, my logic, all those things are the things that we have that are not shared, certainly not to the extent that we have it with other, with other animals. So it kind of looks like this. This is the brain. Um, oh, that sounds good. This is the brain. This is the brain on dope. Um, <laughs> So this is the reptilian brain in here, OK? And inside the reptilian brain is a little, little ver a very small um, part of the brain called the amygdala. And the amygdala is where we keep all of our, um, all of our really deep emotions. It is where, if, if we have a, um, a, a traumatic event occurs to us when we're a child or when we're young or it's a really big traumatic event, that's where we store it. It bypasses the conscious brain altogether. It has nothing to do with the cerebral cortex. And this is a very active part of the brain. And it's something that dogs rely on a lot. And, and it's, I think it's important to remember that they don't have a cerebral cortex. So anytime you're thinking about changing the behavior of a dog, remember that they don't have reasoning ability to the extent that we do. Now, of course, they're all sitting, Strider's sitting there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do so. But, uh, but so far, he hasn't shown a lot of signs of doing that, not having that. Um, so when you've got this little amygdala that is giving all these, all these you know, um, emotions, and it's not going through the, the cerebral cortex, then it's very hard to control your emotions, if, especially if you're a dog or another animal. So um, there you are. You're walking along a street, and or actually a trail would be more appropriate. 
and you see a snake right in front of you, what do you do? <laughs> right? You're going to jump back about 20 feet. And then you walk up closer and you go, oh, that was a stick. Which is what commonly would happen in a case like that. Well, what's happened is your amygdala, the, the, your, your sight um, has gone, it, it, because you've gone into panic mode, the, 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 the visual of the, of the stick went directly to your amygdala. It went, ah, stop, go back, move away, panic. And then after a while, your cerebral cortex, so co um, within a second, your cerebral cortex takes over and you go, oh, okay, that was a stick. Now I feel really stupid. So you've probably seen dogs that have done this before. Um, I remember with Ariel, who was my Belgian Shepherd, who was definitely a highly reactive dog in some areas. She would, you know, if, if there had been something that fell on the trail that we nor normally walked on overnight, she'd go up to, she'd, she'd see it and she'd go, Boof! and then she'd walk up, and walk up, really pausing, really nervous, back up, back up, back up, get all the way up there and then go, oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a fallen tree, you know. It's a whatever it is. So, um, so that, that's what happens to your brain when you see something that startles you or scares you or whatever. Is it, 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 you get the response far more qu quickly than, than your cerebral cortex can handle. This is really important because in the time it takes for that response to get to the dog's brain, the dog may have already bitten somebody. If, if indeed the dog is going to bite, that would be when it would happen, is when the brain has gotten that message before the rest of their brain actually says that that is not a big problem. So you will get a dog that when it sees a guy is going to want to snap at a guy before it realizes that it's really the father in the house, which is what happened today. The, 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 the husband, every time the dog sees the husband and he's wearing a different set of clothes than he was the day before, the dog reacts to the husband as though it's a stranger and threatens the husband. Has not bitten the husband yet, um, but there's time, you know. Dog is only seven months old. So we have to control our own, I mean, we, we, here we are, we've seen this snake and, and now we're going, I'm going to go and investigate this and it's, you know, oh look, that's just a stick, we don't need to worry about it. And so the next time we see something that looks like a, a snake on the trail, we go, you know, last time it was just a stick. So we might be a little cautious, being as we're not stupid, hopefully, but we're not going to go ah! and leap back. Well, the dog doesn't have that option unless it's had a lot of work. So it will continue to do this until it has learned that it doesn't have to, which can be a long, slow process, as you might expect it to be. Um, fear, this is a very fearful dog, is it not? It's a very, very scared dog. This is a thunderphobic dog. Um, and thunderphobic dogs actually often will go into bathrooms to try to get away from the, uh, the electrical charge in the air. Um, so it is probably the most powerful emotion. It is more, more powerful than rage, for instance, um, which is just anger. But fear is necessary to survival in a species. If you have no fear, then you're likely to get eaten by the next predator. And if you had to learn that on an individual basis, there would be no species. <laughs> you know, if everybody had to learn what to be afraid of, um, just say an animal had to learn what to be afraid of every single time, then you, you just couldn't keep procreating and creating more of the same species. Did that make sense? So, what nature has done is it's implanted some instincts, and so one of the strongest of those instincts is fear. And it, will, it pops up to a greater or lesser extent in, in all dogs. Now what we've been doing, um, which we've talked about in the past, over the last 17, 18,000 years, is we've been working with an animal, the dog, and trying to either erase or override a great deal of the fear. So that when you have a litter of puppies and you're trying to socialize a litter of puppies, what you're looking for are puppies that are what we call affiliative, which is just friendly, that come up to what would ordinarily have been a fear object. 